Good morning, everybody. Uh, Pastor John here from New Life Church in Owaka, Washington. Uh, today is the sermon for Sunday, February 14th. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Uh, this morning, I am joined by Kenny Morris. Uh, Ken is uh, on the board here at New Life. Uh, he also serves as a, I guess what we would call a deacon or an elder. He uh, is one of our leaders here at New Life. Uh, he also is on our worship team, and he loves the Lord. Yes. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, Kenny has a call to ministry on his life. And while I don't know yet what capacity that's going to be, I know that uh, the Lord does use him to speak his words. Uh, so this morning, uh, I am going to turn over the pulpit uh, to uh, Ken and allow him to share a message that the Holy Spirit has laid on his heart. And so this is the message for you today. Uh, as I introduce Ken, I do want to say one other thing about him. Uh, Kenny likes to talk a lot about something we call street cred. <laughs> and uh, Kenny's background is one that has been, it's had some rough spots. And so what I would tell you is that there is a tremendous amount of credibility uh, that comes from this man. So please listen to what he has to say this morning. Hear the words of the Holy Spirit as he speaks to you and understand that everything uh, that Kenny is sharing with you today comes from a heart of love, a heart of compassion, and absolutely one that is serving the Lord uh, to the best of his absolute ability. All right. I love you guys, and so Kenny's going to close it out with you today. Uh, you won't have to look at me again, uh, so he'll just close however he sees fit. And uh, I will. Uh, I look forward to seeing you again next week. Well, thank you, Pastor. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, yes, I'm a little nervous, um, but I, I I pray that uh, this would uh, bless uh, everybody's heart out there, and uh, Lord, that uh, I just pray that it would uh, it would make a difference. So, uh, in speaking with the Holy Spirit and in prayer uh, while writing this, um, this is what, what I, I believe I was led to, uh, to convey to you all. <laughs> um, when we are born, we are what Jesus called born of the flesh. We are conceived in the world and born into the world. John refers to the flesh as the natural mind. It has been passed on through Adam's disobedience. It is the mind we are born with. John also refers to the natural mind in 1 John 2.16. For every, everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life come not from the Father, but from the, from the world. Um, in contrast, Jesus in John 3.3 3, uh, says, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. So, how can someone be born again? This is the question Nicodemus, a Pharisee, had for Jesus. And in John 3.4, he asked, can, how can someone be born when they are, when, when they are old? Um, surely they cannot enter the second time into their mother's womb to be born. Uh, Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and spirit. So, what did it mean to be born again, spiritually born again? In John 3.16, we read, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So in putting our faith in the sacrifice of Je that Jesus made on the cross, and freely giving our life over to Christ, you get grace and, forgive, and the forgiveness of God. Now that we've done, we've been born again. You've you've given your life to Christ. We now need something we've never needed before: spiritual food. 
also known as the bread of life, the sword of the spirit, the holy word, the Bible. Job knew how important reading his, the word was. In Job 23, 12, I have, not depart, I have not departed from the commands of his lips. I have treasured the word of his mouth more than daily bread. So it must be really important, right? And in Psalm 119, 105, the psalmist writes, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. With God's word in our heart to lead us, we find direction, guidance, and guidance to an eternal life in the kingdom of God. So we need spiritual food, the word of God in us, to stay healthy. We also need to know that we are, uh, there are other reasons uh, for reading God's word. One is to is to keep the flesh in its rightful place, which is in alignment with God's word. We as followers of Christ are now on Satan's radar. We have a real enemy. Um, in First Peter five eight, it, right, it reads, "Be alert and sober minded." Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion for someone to devour. So that begs the question, have you ever watched videos of lions in the wild? Who do they attack? The sick, the small, the defenseless? Satan's a coward. <laughs> he, he does not like any to be challenged. Um, so, so he, he goes after those that are, that are not, um, not strong enough to defend. Um, so uh, how do we protect, how do we find protection from being served up as lion food? In Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, we read, uh, finally be strong in the Lord and be his <laughs> and in his mighty power uh, put on the full armor of God so that, that you can take a stand against the devil's schemes for our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers against the authorities against the powers of the dark world against the spiritual spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of the evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate plate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, uh, take up your, your shield of faith, which, is, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which are the word of God. And, and pray in spirit, in the spirit, on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep praying for all the Lord's people. So in conclusion, read your Bible so that you are ready for the struggles that come from life the blessings that come from knowing God's heart. Um, Pastor uh, talked about street cred and how I, I, I believe in street cred. Uh, when no, God doesn't 
doesn't bring anything into your life that he's going to waste. So when those challenges come and you lean on him and his understanding and not your own, you can use those as tools when other people are struggling in those same areas so that they can't come to you and say, you don't know what I'm talking about. You've never lived this because you have credibility. You've lived it. You can use that as a tool against this roaring lion that it speaks of because once again, he is a coward. He doesn't like, he doesn't like challenge. So speak with boldness. Tell, tell your story. We don't get through this life by ourselves. That's why God gathers us together in a body because the body needs the whole body to live. So if you don't have a professed faith in, in, in Jesus and, and you, you uh, want that, it's a free gift. It's, it's for you. And then just follow this. You will never uh, regret um, the blessings that come from, the, from living a life with Christ. Uh, there will be tough times, but you never go through it alone. And um, just know that, that uh, there are people out there praying for you and uh, that, uh, that God loves you very much. And uh, with that, um, I hope you all have a good day. God bless you all, and thank you uh, for spending your time with us. And uh, we'll talk to you next week.